This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Do you know there are three movies in the Train to Busan series? Yeah, it's a whole trilogy, all directed by the same dude. In case you don't know, Train to Busan is a 2016 South Korean action horror film about a father and daughter aboard a train infested with zombies. Thanks to its suspenseful story and lovable characters, and Ma Dong Seok's daddy energy, the film became an international sensation held by fans as one of the best zombie films ever. The two other movies? Not so much. Years ago, I made a video on Train to Busan analyzing and praising its characters. It just so happened, character is also the reason why the other two movies failed critically. We have learned from a success, perhaps we can also learn from failures. So let's take a look at Soul Station and Peninsula, talk about the good, the bad, and find out why they don't work. First up, Soul Station. Released in 2016, Soul Station is an animated prequel set at the beginning of the zombie outbreak. The film tells the story of Hei Sun, a former prostitute. Due to financial problems, her boyfriend attempts to pimp her out again. She refuses, and her boyfriend kicks her out of his house. Now homeless and finds herself facing a zombie apocalypse, Hyesun must survive, while her father and boyfriend try to find her amidst the chaos. Let's talk about his strong point first, the social commentary. Literally the first line of the movie. In the film, the virus first spread through the unhoused community. It torments the vulnerable and overlooked, becoming stronger in the process. That's how the AIDS epidemic started. It wasn't taken seriously when it was first spreading in the LGBT community. Those who were empowered deliberately ignored the suffering of marginalized people. This movie understands that outbreaks are often a result of policy failures. By the time interventions were made, the outbreak is already too strong to be stopped. And just like real life, when things get out of hand, the most affected are also blamed. We experience all that through the eyes of Hye Son, a former prostitute turned homeless woman. We see it from the ground level, making the commentary just that much more impactful. Now onto the best stuff, the glaring lack of a character arc. This movie believes in one thing, no good deed goes unpunished. In this scene, Hyesun is stuck hanging up a telephone line. Obama, despite being a stranger, decides to risk his life to help her. As a result, he gets killed. Hyesun reacts for like 2 seconds and moves on. Deaths like this happen frequently in this movie and it pretty much never registered. Hyesun comes out of each encounter the exact same person as before. Think back to Train to Busan. Remember how the protagonist starts off as a selfish person. After Big Man risks his life to save him, it subtly changes the protagonist's perspective, leading him to return a favor later, something he would not do before this event. Writers have to see the world for their characters. They have to understand how a selfish character may change when they are challenged by selfless acts. But Soul Station does the opposite. The characters see the world through the writer. The writer knows it is a zombie apocalypse. It is supposed to be cruel. So the characters expect the cruelty, and the deaths never make any impact. The characters react only in ways that serve the theme, regardless of realism. This brings us to an even bigger problem, inconsistent character motivation. Remember why Hyesun is homeless? Her boyfriend kicks her out after she refused to sell her body. So it's really hard to believe that the same boyfriend would turn around and risk his life to save her, especially when he, just like Hyesun, doesn't face any perspective altering encounters. What's even more unbelievable is the father who is looking for his son this entire time, 
turns out to be her former pimp coming after her with a vengeance. You mean a pimp risks his life in a zombie apocalypse just to track down an escaped prostitute? I find that very hard to believe. The film is too busy with its commentary to consider if its characters are acting logically. They're like this because the film needs drama. It's a twist for the sake of a twist. Characters don't act nor react like real people. They have no agency of their own. Instead of leading the story, they do what the story dictates. They are just puppets. If you are watching this channel, chances are you have an interest in foreign cinema. If so, let me tell you one thing: this channel cannot live without Nord VPN. It ain't easy trying to find foreign movies here in Canada. The Terror Life, an excellent South Korean thriller, is only available on Netflix if you are in select Asian countries. But with Nord VPN, I can change my virtual location to Hong Kong and bam, content unlocked. With Chinese subtitles as an added bonus, use the link in the description and you can get a two-year plan with an exclusive deal plus four bonus months free. With a 30-day money-back guarantee policy, it's risk-free to try it out. One account supports up to six devices. Use it on your laptop and phone, no problem. Whether you are a foreign film enthusiast, a diaspora, a frequent traveler, or even someone who studies language by reading subtitles, a VPN is a great help. So visit the link in the description and give NordVPN a try today. Next up, Peninsula. Set four years after the event of Train to Busan, in this sequel, South Korea is no more. Former Marine Captain Jung Seok lost most of his family during the evacuation and is now living as a refugee in Hong Kong. Hoping for a second chance in life, he accepts a job from a mobster. Sneak into the zombie-infested peninsula, retrieve a truck for money, and he'll be rewarded handsomely. Yep, a zombie heist film. But when he arrives at the fallen country, he encounters local gangs still in the area, as well as survivors whom he denied help four years ago. Suddenly, he has a chance for redemption. Surprisingly, Peninsula is an action film, not horror. And for what it is, the action looks great. This scene in particular stands out. The tight corridor and the wide-angle lens give amazing impact, all presented in a nice long take. Many action sequences are inventively lit, playing with light to almost a surreal degree, like this vaguely homoerotic zombie boy band scene. If all you want is a mindless action film, actually, I still wouldn't recommend it. Good action usually requires five elements: clearly defined characters, short-term and long-term goals, a committed plan, tangible and immediate obstacles, and relatable stake. Let's explain it with an example. In this sequence from Train to Busan, our characters get a distressing call from their families. The only way to get to their families is through the zombie horde, so they arm themselves defensively and fight their way through. It's an exhilarating sequence because we know the characters; we can put ourselves in their shoes. There is a long-term goal to save the family, and a short-term goal get to the other side. The plan is simple: fight your way through. But it's a discussed, thought-out, and committed plan. We are on board with it. The obstacles, zombies, are immediate and tangible, and the stake of potentially losing the family is very high. See how, with each added element, we get a little bit more invested in the action. We share the same knowledge, have the same desires, face the same challenges as the characters. Our empathy motivates the action. Now look at this scene from Peninsula. Here, two young survivors are driving Jung Seo to somewhere. We don't know where. It lacks a long-term goal. It's the first time we meet these two young girls, so it also lacks character. They want to get to the other side of the tunnel. Short-term goal. The exit is blocked by zombies, obstacles. So they distract the zombie with a remote-controlled car, a plan. But they are inside an armored car. 
We don't know how bad things will get if they are surrounded by zombies. So, we only have an ill-defined stick. The result is a sequence that amounts to no more than a joyride in the back seat. Almost all action scenes in this movie are lacking in the same way. A character gets thrown into an arena with a swarm of zombies. But we don't know this character that well. Zhang Xiao raids the base to rescue said character. He faces little to no resistance, so there are no tangible obstacles. The escape plan is just to drive away, start shooting if you are surrounded. Instead of fighting alongside the characters, the audience is strapped to the front of the car, forced to watch the action and not knowing what the f*** is going on. But it's all doomed from the get-go anyway, because remember why Zhang Xiao accepts this mission? It's for money, so he can live better. We never see him living a harsh life. The moment he appears in Hong Kong, he looks fine. A bit of an edge goal maybe, but we never feel the harshness of life. Throughout this entire movie, we barely know who Zhang Xiao is, why he needs the money, and why he grew a conscience when he saw a survivor. I'm pretty sure if you and I are in this situation, we'll turn down the job in the first second. If I can even be on the same side as your character, how am I going to fight by your character's side? There are also many other smaller flaws. Soul Station is poorly animated, and Peninsula has really crappy CGI. I didn't mention them, because all of that wouldn't be a problem if I actually care about the characters. Train to Busan has just as many seams. It's tonally a strange movie. I can say I didn't burst out laughing when Ma Dong Xiao slams a zombie into the ceiling. But it doesn't matter if it's silly or melodramatic. The consistent and relatable characters glue all the different parts together, making the whole movie a cohesive experience. Doesn't matter what happened to them, we are on board. Ultimately, stories are about humans. Even in a movie about a pig, the pig still acts like a human. It's the one thing that will make or break your narrative fiction. It's the reason why Miyazaki movies are so fantastic. It's also the reason why Tenet is ass. It's the reason why Train to Busan worked, while the others don't. It's a zombie movie, but humans still have to be humans.